Good morning, everyone. I hope you all had some coffee this morning because today's teaching is going to be a doozy. If this is your first time tuning in, I want to apologize for coming in on this subject. Um, it is just confusing if you don't have your Bible right there with you following it, okay? So um, welcome to now. No other way to start our day than at the feet of Jesus. And what we will what we will be talking about today is something that people can end up saying, oh, the Bible contradicts itself. And so we are exploring why it does not. Heavenly Father, we come to you this morning thanking you and praising you, Father, for who you are. Thanking you that you tell us to study, to show ourselves approved unto you, a workman that needeth not be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth, Father. We thank you, Lord God, that for the things that we don't understand, we can sit at your feet, Father, until you explain them to us, Lord God. You said if we search for you, Lord God, that we will find you, Lord, and that's the answers as well, Lord. And so we just thank you and we praise you, Lord God for who you are. We thank you for telling us the things that we need to know, Lord God. We thank you that we can trust your word, Lord God. Uh, again, if we have any contradictions whatsoever in your word, if we have anything that is not true, Lord God, then we can't believe any of it. So we just thank you for being who you are, Lord God, for being how you are, Lord God, for being loving, Lord, for being kind, Father, and for forgiving us for our sins, Lord. We ask in the name of Jesus that you would lead this study on today, Father. As we go through the wives of Esau, Lord God, and whatever else we're able to dive into. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right. So this morning we are in Genesis chapter 26. We're going to read verses 34 and 35 and then go ahead and get started. And I'm reading from the King James and they read as follows. And Esau was 40 years old when he took to wife Judith, the daughter of Beri, the Hittite, and Bashamath, the daughter of Elon, the Hittite, which were of which were a grief of mind unto Isaac and to Rebekah. All right, and there's really no use of talking about where we stopped off yesterday because the verses before this don't really have anything to do with Esau and his wives. We did start talking a little bit about Esau's wives yesterday, but I'm going to go ahead and just talk about it all again on today so that it's all within one study. All right, so hopefully it'll be easier to follow. All right, so Esau was 40 years old when he took to wife Judith, the daughter of Beri. All right, so this means that Isaac and Rebekah, his parents, are 100 years old because they had him at the age of 60, him and his twin brother Jacob. All right, and so yesterday I was telling you that the first wife, we're going to um, call Judith, wife number one, and she is the daughter of Beri the Hittite. This is the only place that she is mentioned in the Bible. All right, so that is wife number one. Wife number two, here it says, and, and it's pronounced Bosmath, Bosmath, the daughter of Elon the Hittite. All right, and we started talking about her yesterday. And wife number two is also mentioned in verse uh, Genesis chapter 36, verse 2. All right. And if you all can please bear with me on today with, with going back and forth with all of these. All right. So if we look at verse 2 of chapter 36, it says Esau took his wives of the daughters of Canaan. And um, Canaan was the grandson of Noah, and he was the son of Heth, I mean of Ham, okay? And so Ham is the one who did something he shouldn't have, um, and Noah put a curse not on Ham, but on Canaan in his line, all right? And so Esau took his wives of the daughters of Canaan, Ada, the daughter of Elon, the Hittite. All right, so we're going to stop there because it says Ada, the daughter of Elon, the Hittite. And back in our study, it said Bosmath, the daughter of Elon, the Hittite. All right, and so I was telling you all yesterday, somebody, y'all could call them Sweet Pie or Sweet Pea, um, and their real name could be something else. And Bosmath is actually the word for spice. And so um, she was called both both math as well as Ada. All right, one in the same. So that's wife number two. Wife number three. We are going to go over to Genesis chapter 28 and we're going to read verse nine. And it says, well, let's read verse eight as well. And Esau, seeing that the daughters of Canaan pleased not Isaac his father, then went 
Esau unto Ishmael, and took unto the wives which he had, Mahalath, the daughter of Ishmael, Abraham's son, the sister of Nebahoth, to be his wife. All right. And so Esau, if you don't remember, Esau was favored by, um, by Isaac. Okay. And then the brother Jacob was favored by his mom, Rebecca. All right. And so Esau is realizing that, hey, these Canaanite wives that I have are not pleasing to my dad. So let me go ahead and get a wife of his relatives, basically. All right. And so don't forget that Abraham had two sons. Well, he had six or eight, actually, but he had two sons initially, one by a lady named Hagar and then one by his wife, Sarah. So he had Ishmael. Ishmael was his firstborn. And so this is Abraham's firstborn's granddaughter. Okay. Um, and so, and actually great granddaughter because Ishmael's the dad and no, the granddaughter. Ishmael's the dad and then Mahalath is the daughter. All right. And so this is Abraham's relative. All right. So let's go ahead and read verse nine again. Then went Esau unto Ishmael and took unto the wives, which he had Mahalath, the daughter of Ishmael, Abraham's son, the sister of Nab Nab Nabahoth to be his wife. All right. So she appears again. If we go back over to verse 36 and we look at verse three. It says, and Bosmath, Ishmael's daughter, sister of Nebahoth. All right. And so it's like, wait a minute. Didn't we just have a Bosmath? Yes, we did. But you can have a Tina and a Christina and they would call them both Tina, um, possibly. Right. So it's not uncommon to have somebody that has the same name or to be called the same thing. So for here, Mahalath and Bosmath are the same people all right because they are Ishmael's daughter the sister of Nabahoth all right one in the same so that is wife number three all right so where do we get wife number four from if we look at Genesis chapter 36 verse 2 it says Esau took his wives of the daughters of Canaan Ada, the daughter of Elon the Hittite, we talked about her already, and Aholibama, <clears throat> excuse me, the daughter of Ana, the daughter of Zibion, the Hivite. We've not talked about a woman that is a Hivite, all right? So this is daughter number four. And daughter number four is talked about again um, throughout verse or chapter 36. But Let's talk about this real quick. It says, and a holy mama, the daughter of Ana, the daughter of Zibion, the Hivite. If you read this and not dig into it, you would think that Ana is the daughter of Zibion and that she is the mom of a holy mama. But that is not what it is saying. Let's read this again. Aholibama, the daughter of Ana, the daughter of Zibion, the Hivite. What this is actually saying is Ana is the dad and Zibion is the granddad. All right. So how do we get this? We have to actually dig deeper into 36. If we go over to um, 36 18 it talks about and these are the sons of a holy Bama Esau's wife and so it names the son and uh, or the sons and it talks about the dukes that came um, from them as well and then if we go down to um, I did not write this one down oh if we go down to verse 24 it says, and these are the children of Zibion. All right. So Zibion is the granddad of a holy Bama, both Asia and Ana. All right. And so Ana was the dad of a holy Bama. All right. And we say it's the dad and not the mom for this reason right here. This was that Ana that found the mules in the wilderness and he fed the asses of Gibeon his father all right that's the only way 
that we know that it was not a mom that they were talking about, but it is a dad that they are talking about of a holy bomb. All right. And so how do we um, how do we reconcile this? I guess I want to say if we go over to Matthew chapter one, verse one, we can see that it says the book of the generation of Jesus Christ, the son of David, the son of Abraham. Now, we know that Abraham did not father David. All right. David was generations down the line, but they consider Jesus. And, and we know that David was not the father of Jesus Christ. But here they're saying Jesus Christ, who's the son of David. And they're saying David, who's the son of Abraham. If you have great, 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 great grandson, or if you have son, they are all still son. Okay. And so back over here, when we talk about a holy bomb, and it talks about um, being the daughter of Anna and the daughter of Zibion, the Hivite, even though she was the granddaughter, it just says she is the daughter. All right. Mouthful, I know. Um, replay this video as many times as you all need to in order to understand. And then um, just one last thing because it's 511. Um, a holy bomba must have been an amazing person. Um, <clears throat> well, real quick, also, Zibion, that word in the Hebrew means colored, all right? And we know that um, most Africans descend from the line of Ham. And they do say that um, someplace in there is where the blacks came from, all right? So Zibion means colored. And then um, if we go over to Genesis chapter 36, verse 40, it says, And these are the names of the dukes that came of Esau, according to their families, after their places, by their names, all right? And so a duke is a captain, a friend, or a governor. And if we look at verse 41, it says Duke, a holy bomber. Now, most Dukes were males, but this woman had to be bad because she was one of the Dukes, all right? Um, that is all we are going to go over today. Again, mouthful, hopefully you had coffee. If not, go get you some and then come back to this study again and look at how it is that Esau um, actually has four wives that are named in the Bible. I want to make sure that I don't have anything else in my notes written down to tell you all. That is basically it. All right, let's go ahead and pray out. Heavenly Father, we come to you on this day. Thank you and praising you once again, God, just for who you are. Lord, we love you, Father. We thank you how everything, Lord God, goes according to to um, your plan, Father. Um, we may deviate from it, Lord God, but your plan is still going to go forward, Lord. However, you have to make it go forward. And we thank you for that, Lord God. We thank you, Lord, that if we need a course correction, Lord God, that you are there. You're not hollering at us like the GPS. You know, I'm talking about recalculating and, you know, getting upset if we don't turn when it says turn and all of that stuff, Father. Yes, we may disappoint you, Lord God, um, but you're not caught by um, surprise. You're not caught off guard, Father. You will go ahead and redirect us, Lord God, when we decide that we're ready to get back on course, Father. And that is... Um, What's great about you, Lord God, um, just serving you, Father, is that knowing that if we mess up, Lord, that you are there to, to just welcome us with open arms like the prodigal son, Father. Lord, we come to you on this day asking that you would please be with us, watch over us, keep us, Lord God, guide us, protect our loved ones, Father, um, and help us to represent you in all that we do, Lord God. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right. I love you all, Lord willing. I will see you all on next week actually so have an amazing weekend